Good morning, Jubilee. Let us have our pastoral prayer. Lord Jesus, we come before you this morning in our worship service. We want to honor you. Thank you, Lord, for sustaining us for these past weeks. Lord, we know that because of this Omicron variant, our hearts are troubled. We pray, Lord, for healing for those among us who are sick. We pray for strength. We pray for your provision. We pray for your protection. Lord, as we listen to your message for us this morning, may you quiet down our hearts so that we can listen from your word. Thank you, Lord, for our church. And as a church body, we continue to encourage each other in our faith, in our hope, and in our love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning, our scripture reading is found in Romans chapter 12, 9 to 16. Let me read it. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. This morning, the title of our message is The Restored Life. It's based on the passage we have just read. Let me ask you a question. How are we doing? How's your family? Of course, we continue to pray together for each other for healing and recovery. Some of us are still sick and recovering. And our hope that our bodies will be able to fight against this virus. As we celebrate 59 years next Sunday of our beloved Jubilee Evangelical Church, we have experienced lives of sacrifice, of love and truth in the past year. And we continue in this journey of faith of transformation by renewing our minds this year. A review of the past Sundays, we talk about transformation by the renewing of our mind. A renewed mind will lead to the right thinking. A right thinking will equip us with the right attitude. And having the right attitude, we can live out with a right conduct and right action. In the whole book of Romans, the context of our passage in Romans 12, in Romans 1 to 11 is the doctrine of our salvation. And Apostle Paul continues to expound this in chapters 12 to 16 in how to practice this doctrine. It's a salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, based on scripture alone, for the glory of God alone. In our devotional series, which we started this week, Talent is Never Enough by John C. Maxwell, many leaders today place too much emphasis on talent alone. John C. Maxwell in his book says, if talent alone is enough, then why do you and I know so many talented people who are not successful? And may I add, have not finished well because there are ingredients for a fruitful life to happen. According to scriptures, we are to abide in Christ to bear much fruit of transformation. John 15, 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I also learned from a spiritual mentor in yesteryears that we need care courage, compassion, and community so that we can be like Christ in our character. 
So we are to be mindful of our thoughts. What is important is our minds. We need to renew our minds. The Apostle Paul in Colossians 3, 2 to 3 says, Set your mind on things above and not on things on the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. The power of the Holy Spirit guides us and renew us to help us renew our minds. We need to be still enough before God each day to listen to His voice above all the other voices that try to get our attention so that we know our direction in life as we reflect on the goodness of God. We overcome our sins by the Word of God so that we can truly repent and seek the Lord's will. It is a heart issue of transformation to happen always. The heart of the matter is the matter of the heart. In the first Sunday, we talk about transformation, a new beginning, a renewed mind. Second Sunday, that was reinforced for us as we offer our bodies as living sacrifice. It is our spiritual act of worship and we are no longer, we should no longer conform to the pattern of this age, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Last Sunday, we talked about the gospel-worthy life. So let me just summarize the messages as we go to our message for today. In Romans 12, 1 and 2, it says, The renewed mind is the direct result of a repentant life of sacrifice. And then, the redeemed heart is evident in our faith community with humility. In Romans 12, 3 to 8. And then for today... The restored life in Christ loves deeply, lives uprightly, and learns empathy. Overcoming the sin of idolatry in our lives leads to true restoration in Christ. Turning our brokenness into wholeness in Christ. There is beauty in ashes. What are the idols of the heart? Three things that capture our hearts. Power. An example of this is political power, especially during this election days. Money, all forms of greed. You, th- you see this in media already. More of the things of this world. And pleasure, sexual immorality, gluttony, and the other forms of sensuality. Three major temptations that the devil used to lure us into sin, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life. The prophet Ezekiel in the Old Testament prophesied that there's a time that God will give us a new heart, a new spirit He will put within us. He will remove our heart of stone and change it into heart of flesh. He will put His spirit within us and cause us to walk in his statutes, and to be careful to obey his rules. Scripture always reminds us to be holy, for God is holy. Not through self-effort holiness, but perfect holiness given through Jesus Christ. Our problem, based on the book of Romans, Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. This is what we call total human depravity. We are all tangled by our own desires. We are all frozen with a lot of fears. We are all broken by sin. The real solution to our problem is the Lord Jesus Christ once we believe in Him. Romans 6, 23. 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Apostle Paul mentioned this in the whole book of Romans. We are easily drawn to our sins. We are proud and loud. We all have been disobedient to the law of God. Therefore, the wrath of God is upon us. No one is perfect except our Lord Jesus Christ. So the real solution to our sin problem, our total depravity, is the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrated His own love to us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So renew your mind. Do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove 
what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Paul also, also reminds the Philippian Christians in Philippians 4.8, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable, if there is anything excellent, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Think about these things. Renewing our minds. Change our thoughts into noble thoughts. We are to think of noble thoughts by renewing our minds, not to think according to the philosophy or mindset of our world. Examples of a mindset of our world is the cookie cutter mentality. Everything looks the same, same shape. This is the effect of industrialization, mass production, science, okay, uh, teaches us that, that we are from single-celled uh, organism and become complex, okay? And then there's uh, movies expounding vi violence, vengeance, fighting corruption. And then there's feng shui, okay? And superstition of all kinds. And then if you do this, it's bad luck. If you do this, it's good luck. So all these things are all the mindset of the world and we need to change. There's also deceptive philosophy. It's a warning to us that entangle us. Materialism during our time, it's called I am a material girl by Madonna, okay? Or communism by Joseph Stalin and Paul Pat. Okay, you want to reach a certain utopia, but the government in its ideals want to control everything. And then of course, atheism, uh, Nietzsche's Ubermensch, Superman, influenced Hitler and Nazism's uh, racism, okay? And then pride and selfishness, the me first mentality. So Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. And Paul, Apostle Paul reminds us that there is only one foundation that is already laid, and that is Christ. In, second, in 1 Corinthians 3, 11, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light. So the question for us this morning, what is your work? Is it with value? Can it, can it be uh, honorable at the, at the last days? Now, going back to our passage this morning, Apostle Paul in previous chapters taught us about the importance of doctrine, the importance of our justification by grace, our sanctification by grace, and our glorification. So how do we now live a restored life in Christ? How does it look like? To summarize it in Romans 12, 9 to 16, for this morning, the restored life in Christ loves deeply, lives uprightly, and learns empathy. So the restored life in Christ has three commands. The first command is love one another deeply. This is found in Romans 12, 9a, 10, verse 13, and 16a. In verse 9a, it says, let love be genuine. This is the whole idea of love one another deeply. What does it mean to be genuine? We want what is genuine rather than what is fake. Like when we talk about love, we want real love. We want love that is true. We don't want fake love. We want to serve with right motives. Or are we just faking it like the Pharisees? The application of this is we are to show kindness with authenticity and with authority like Christ. What does it mean to be fake? Of course, you've read fake news and you don't like it. How about fake parts for your car? How about fake gold? And the list continues. We want the real thing. Genuine leather 
genuine gold, genuine parts, genuine diplomas, not those from recto. Let love be genuine. So love one another deeply as Paul commands us. Love one another as Christ have loved you. There are so many one another passages in Scripture. Pray for one another. Serve, for, serve one another. Honor each other. Submit to one another. Bear with each other. And once we practice this, there is peace. When we forgive each other, there is peace. And after we have peace, there's a bond of reconciliation. There's one in mind and purpose. We achieve unity. The unity of the Spirit in the body of Christ. There is the fruit of love. And the cycle continues. You have love, peace, unity. Love, peace, unity. So love each other deeply. The second verse that talks about loving each other deeply is in verse 10. Love, be devoted to one another with brotherly affection, with sisterly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. What is brotherly affection? Understanding each other in one's context, extending the extra mile and extra strength of compassion. What kind of competition we should be part of? We, are, we should be outdoing each other in showing love and honor. In our pastoral team retreat last December, we learned from 2 Corinthians 5, 14 to 15, for the love of Christ control us because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him for their sake died and was raised. Christ's love is our primary motive of our service, it compels us, it controls us, so that we can love each other deeply. Verse 13 and 16, it says, contribute to the needs of the saints, seek to show hospitality. These are manifestation of loving each other deeply. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Command after command in this passage, Paul is addressing our attitude, our actions. Are we contributing? Are we seeking? Are we continuously and consistently being an encouragement to God's people? Are we a blessing to others? Are we taking care of the sick? Of course, our sick and giving to our members in need, like our care towards Uncle Boise Kalamyong for the past weeks and others as well. And we thank God for his successful heart surgery. And of course, reaching out to the poor as we have given gifts last Christmas in our love overflowing, in our love tree project to our daughter churches, Gilmore Outreach and Tondo Outreach. And showing compassion to each other during the difficult times as we are affected by Omicron variant and the Typhoon Odette in Visayas and Mindanao. Have, and we extended water, drinking water, to those areas as well. Recently, another example of showing hospitality is when we visited my parents at Cebu last December 27 until January 3. We thank God that we were able to surprise my parents in Cebu with a short visit. They didn't know we were coming, okay? I, Anne, and Nathan. And it was a wonderful time connecting with them physically, face-to-face, -face, after 20 months of just calls, texts, and online pleasantries. It was transformation, transformational to share a meal together, to hug each other, to laugh, to share stories, to disagree with each other, to care for each other as a family. Being together, encouraging one another is very important. This is why restoration in community is very important as a church. The life experience we have as a church is very important. The Apostle Paul commands these, that we need to love each other deeply. The second command here in the restored life in Christ is to live upright lives zealously. And this is found in Romans 12, 9b, 11, and 14. So let me begin with 9b. 
live upright lives zealously, abhor, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, and questions of morality, evil and good. What is evil according to God's word? If the word of God says this is evil, then that is evil. What is good according to God's holiness? And that is good. What is the basis of our morality? Of course, it's scriptures. Our standard is the Bible in terms of morality. What is good and what is evil? And usually this is confused. This is being confused by the philosophy of our world. We are not to imitate our first parents, Adam and Eve, who thought they can be wise in their own eyes by eating of the forbidden fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. So in other words, we are to be mindful of our thoughts, renewing our minds. Abhor, abhor what is evil. Let's name it. What are the evil things that we're, we've been doing? Spaggle, right? Spaggle is just an acronym of the seven deadly sins. Sloth, pride, anger, greed, gluttony, lust, envy. Okay, just easy to remember. Spaggle, S-P-A-G-G-L-E. Sloth, pride, anger, greed, gluttony, lust, envy. These are the seven deadly sins that capture our hearts. We are to overcome the temptation that Adam and Eve faced at the orchard of Eden. What did the serpent say to Eve? What was the lie? You will not surely die. You will not surely die. That was the lie because chapters after that fall, okay, there were deaths left and right. Okay, even the oldest human being at the time, Methuselah, lived to 100, 969 years old, and yet he dies. So that's the effect of sin. When God says, you will surely die, when you eat, when you eat of the fruit, you will surely die. And that's so true because for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ our Lord. So be mindful of your thoughts. In our BSOP PhD class on spiritual formation and discipleship, we also talk about these different sin sins that we need to overcome. This means that we need to say an emphatic no to the pattern of the world. Of course, we have listed some of it, but let me name some of the sins. Sexual immorality, hatred and division, pride, greed, selfishness, entitlement. How about this? Two kinds of Asian culture. Just a character, a fic fictional character. His name is George Washington C. He grew up in a family that is perfect. He had a 97% grade in his math exam, and it was not enough. He was grounded by his parents for the weekend. No computer games for him. This is based on the idea of being driven in terms of our performance. No mistakes allowed in order to be accepted. Okay, very true to the Asian culture. Or how about the other extreme? A person named Juan Tamad, okay? He grew up with procrastination, always late, okay? It is the I don't really care mentality, okay? And both of these, okay, George Washington C. and Juan Tamad, okay, are examples of our Asian culture in terms of the pattern of this world. The question now, which one are you? Are you coming from a background of the performance driven or you're coming from the background of laziness or what we call uh, Juan Tamad? So verse 11 says, do not be slothful or lazy in zeal. Be fervent in spirit, serve the Lord. Never lacking or lagging in diligence, being productive with urgency, serving the Lord with zeal. During the pastoral retreat, our speaker, Reverend David Chung, reminded us to be being fervent in spirit. It's like a zealot, okay? Boiling point, fire intensity, uncontrollable, nonstop. There's a clear conviction, no bargain, no excuses, a right attitude against sloppy work. 
We are to serve the Lord with love and excellence for the Great Commission. And that is a motto of our school, Jubilee Christian Academy. We are to serve with pure motives and no compromise. We are to be diligent in serving the Lord. And what is diligence? Going the fervency of one's heart by giving our all, giving our best, creating excellence. Go beyond what is expected. Transform your community with Christ's love. And then verse 14. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. What are blessings? Favor, grace. The story of Abraham, even in his imperfections, we see the blessing of the Lord in his life. He was blessed by the Lord because of God's covenant promise with him. It is so hard to bless someone who mistreats you, okay? Who say all kinds of ill things about you. When people speak ill of us, what is our initial response? We want to retaliate the revenge mentality. I want to get back at this person as soon as possible. How about what are curses? Wishing people ill circumstances. In movies, some people say, go to hell if they're angry. Or in Filipino movies, tamaan ka ng kidlat. Christians say, rather, okay, we are to say as Christians, this is the way to go to heaven. Rather than telling the person to go to hell. We are to show them the gospel. This is the way to go to heaven through Christ our Lord. So the restored life in Christ in our passage in Romans 12, 9 to 16 has three commands. The first command is to love one another deeply. The second command is to live upright lives zealously. And the third command is to learn to empathize sincerely. This is found in Romans 12, verse 12, and 15 and 16. Romans 12 says, verse 12, Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Yes, we are to continue to create what is good in Christ, even in suffering. When we suffer, when we suffer right now for what is right, we continue to persevere. We deny ourselves, take up our cross daily, and follow the Lord. When we suffer for the Lord, we partake of His sufferings. Let us be patient in times of suffering. Verse 15 and 16. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Never be wise in your own sight. Rejoice means we are not just to greet in a Viber or a Facebook page. Congratulations. But we can go the extra mile to send a gift to the person or do something significant to appreciate the person's achievement. Similarly, when we weep with someone, it is not just words of condolence, but being there for the person during that time of grief means a lot. Our presence is more important than our words. Let us not be foolish or wise in our own sight because we need to consult our parents, our teachers, our bosses, our advisors. Therefore, we need spiritual direction for true transformation to happen in our character. So in summary, okay, the restored life in Christ has three commands in Romans 12, 9 to 16. First command is love one another deeply. The second command is to live upright lives zealously. And the third command is to learn to empathize sincerely. Three questions for us this morning to think about. How do we love one another deeply? Second question. How do we live upright lives zealously? And the third question. How do we empathize sincerely? So my prayer and my hope for us this morning is that we are to live the restored life in Christ and that this restored life in Christ has three commands. Love one another deeply, live upright lives zealously, and learn to empathize sincerely. Let us pray. 
Lord, we thank you for your message to us this morning. Thank you for reminding us through the Apostle Paul that many times, Lord, we have sinned against you, against our neighbor, that we haven't really loved each other deeply or live an upright life or to learn to empathize. We pray, O oh God, that you would restore our life, that we would renew our minds, that we would experience transformation of our hearts, of our lives, and that we would continue to grow in our faith in you, that we would be like you, Lord, in our character. So Lord, help us to truly love each other deeply, to truly live upright lives zealously, to truly learn to empathize sincerely. Lord, because apart from you, we can do nothing. Thank you, Lord, for today, this morning, and may we continue to practice these things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now let us receive the benediction of our Lord. Let's pray. Now may the grace of our Heavenly Father and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit be with each of us from this day on until we see the Lord face to face. May we continue to live a restored life in Him. Amen and amen.